you think that the autopilot works uh, in a boat? Try, try to imagine uh, the components that uh, you need to create an, an autopilot. Try to think in the boat and how, how you imagine could be an autopilot system in your boat. Suppose that you have a, an, a, an, a small boat with a, one inboard engine or two inboard engines, gas or diesel. You have your power steering system, hydraulic, for example. How can you imagine that uh, the system works, the autopilot system? You create a program and you introduce the coordinates that you want. But uh, what happened after that? Because this is your idea. I wanted this. I wanted, pay attention. In one hour, move my boat in this direction. After that, for 20 minutes, move in this direction. I, I check the map and I said, okay, I want to move from this point to this point. Okay, I am going to divide that distance in five sections. And uh, I am going to move it, my boat in the first section at northeast 20 degrees for 45 minutes. After that, I am going to change a little southwest uh, at some degrees for fi 45 minutes. And after that, other 30 minutes at this, uh, and other 20 minutes, and finally, I have my, my distance. Those are my coordinates, yeah? For this period of time, this direction. Mm -hmm. The other period of time, the other one, and the other one. And this is the total. Okay, you introduce that information in your computer. And uh, how you think that that information can be used uh, to keep the boat in this direction and after that this and after that this and after that this? How, how you think? Can, only thing in the element that you have in your boat, the system that you know in your boat today, yeah. uh, how, how you need affect those systems and, and in what way? Hydraulics. Okay, you have this one the power steering system. And the power steering system, the actuator is connected with the arm of the rudder, no? Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is the arm of the rudder. Yes or not? Yeah. Okay. I need connect other actuator in this, in this arm, in other position, and this actuator should be a little intelligent. Because this actuator, electrical or electronic, should be connected with my computer. And my computer sent the signal and this actuator beep, 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 change the steer of my boat. Ah, okay. I am going to call to this actuator, servo actuator. This one. And that servo actuator will be connected with my computer. Ah, okay, that's great. This is the first step. I create a program in a computer and I introduce the coordinate that I wanted in that program. And now I create a servo actuator. It's an actuator that extends or retract according with the signal that my computer sends. Ah, okay. And how the computer activate that actuator? In what moment the computer said, hey, puppy, extend. Hey, my friend, retract. Depending of what? Depending of information, information from the GPS, from the GPS antenna. Ah, pay attention. I wanted, during the first 45 minutes, this direction. And the GPS, the position, said, okay, you are moving, but uh, too much. Okay, move it less. The GPS send the correction to the computer and the computer send the information to the actuator and the actuator return a little. You understand? Yeah. Ah, yes. This element validate your information with the real movement of the boat and say, hey, my friend, move it five degrees less or three degrees more to stay in this direction. Everybody follow me? The correction is because GPS. the GPS. Nice, no? And finally, this equipment, what is the function? The servo. Only correct. Only fix it. And keep and keep the boat in your 
in your decision. You decide for 40 minutes that, that position. After that, this. After that, this. And after that, that. Um, this is the final position. Okay, what is the vital component? In this, the computer is important. Uh, the servo is important. The GPS is important. Oh, how I know if the, if the, if the arm, the arm of the, of, the, of the steering system in my boat is in this position or this or this or this? Because I am going to install other element, electronic element, in parallel with this. If I move the, this one, I have the sensor here, the rudder sensor, the rudder sensor. The rudder sensor will be connected in my computer, and the rudder sensor work in parallel with the arm to indicate what is the position of my rudder. My rudder. Nice, no? What is the name of that sensor? Rudder sensor. Rudder sensor. Uh, okay. You think that we need another sensor? This is a very important sensor, the rudder sensor, the position of the rudder. What other sensor do you think you need in an autopilot? The compass. compass. Look, the compass. The gyro. Yeah? I need a compass. Okay, where should be located the compass in a boat? What do you think should be located the compass? The, this small gyro. Where should be located? In the, in the bow. In the in the middle, in the bottom, in the center of the boat as close as possible. Okay, a... I need two important sensors. The compass, hidden. I have this one or this one, both of them. Can I install both of them? Yes. I need the rudder sensor. The I need the GPS and the radar. This one is spinning and send information about, hey, be careful. In 20 miles, you have this situation. Probably you need to move it like this and return to the to the position. Okay, you need to connect this one also. And this is a perfect autopilot. Great. Now you create the autopilot. Now you can uh, start to configure an autopilot for your boat. What is the most di difficult part if you want to create an autopilot? Create this, the programmation to connect to connect that cylinder, that actuator, servo actuator, uh, receiving signal from this computer and the computer validating the information with the GPS. This is the secret, but it's basically, this is the, the, the autopilot. Can I install, I have two boats, one boat with mechanical uh, steering, you remember, with cable, the mechanical system, and other one with hydraulic, like this. Can I install in my old boat with mechanical steering system autopilot? Yeah. You can, Arno. But um, yes, in, in mechanical system, probably is well. it's not accurate, oh, no? Okay. Because the mechanical system is hard, the system, and uh, probably you need a, a special actuator. You can, but uh, yeah. Every day is more and more popular if you have a boat with hydraulic power steering system. In hydraulic circuits, what is the advantage of a mechanical, of a hydraulic circuit over a mechanical circuit? They are smooth. Excuse me? Smooth. It's smooth. Very yeah. smoother. Uh, it's smooth, but uh, it's stronger. It's stronger. How many times? Two times? Three times? Five times? A lot of. Hundreds of times. The hydraulic in comparison with the mechanical. You remember uh, the, the typical mechanical system that uh, you have a lever uh, and you put a pivot, and with the pivot, depending on the distance, you, you can move it heavy, heavy weight, no? How much in that mechanical system you multiply this force? Oh, this time, that distance. Oh. The length of the lever. Yeah. Oh, three times, four times. Depending on the lever, yeah. it's more. This is the mechanical system. Okay, you multiply, but uh, not too much. In hydraulics, you multiply hundred thousand of times. This is why the four leaves leave heavy. Yeah. Those hydraulic equipment, the cranes, leave. Wow. wow, that's incredible. You multiply. This is the, the, the next coming class auxiliary system. I'm going to explain the Pascal law and how those fantastic circuits 
multiply the torque and the force 100,000 of times in comparison with mechanical systems. In a typical hydraulic system, you need a, a hydraulic pump, you need a motor, electric motor, AC or DC, and after that, you need a group of valves to send the fluid in this direction or send the fluid in this direction. That's it. And a reservoir, right? Of course, and a reservoir to circulate the oil and recover the oil. Yeah, you need the motor, the group of valves to to drive the, the, the fluid. The name of those valves are servo valves or body of valves. And uh, you need the actuator, the cylinder, and you need the return, the reservoir. Always, 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 you have a pump. In the pump, inside of the pump, you have an impeller. You have an impeller. The pump suction the fluid, suction the fluid, suction the fluid, compress the fluid, and send the fluid highly compressed. In this element is the body of valves. In this moment, this body of valves is of three positions. One position in the middle, this position, and this position. What happened in this moment, in this position, in the middle with the fluid? And return here for gravity. This is neutral. Thank you. This is neutral. And let me connect my friend here and actuator. Okay? In this moment, the fluid enter here and return. The actuator is moving. No. The no. cylinder is moving. No. no, it's neutral. What happens if I move this body of valves, this box, in this position? What happens with the fluid? The fluid enter here. Push the actuator in. And the and the actuator. And what about the with the fluid here? Look, the fluid here goes into the. Reservoir. Into the rest. This is the reservoir. <coughs> That's clear, guys? Yeah. Ah, nice, nice. Let me move it, this body of valves in this position. What happens? Ah, oh, the fluid goes here, puts over there, and the fluid here returns. Oh, nice. I love it. I have a question. The pressure inside of the system should be constant. Only imagine, give me a, 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 in your car a good example of a hydraulic circuit or a hydraulic system that you have in your car. Power the brake system, power system. The, power the power steering, other one, give me another one, hydraulic system. Uh, transmission. Yeah, the transmission, it's a perfect automatic, uh, automatic transmission, it's, it's, it's a perfect hydraulic, other? The void windshield spray. Correct, other hydraulic. Uh, the cooling Shops. system. Cooling system, yeah. The absorbers, yeah, the Shops. shock absorber, yeah. You have a lot of hydraulic circuits in your boat, in your car, a lot. Let me we think about the brake system. The brake system, when you apply 60 pounds in the pedal, you transmit 60 pounds because it's constant. This, especially, especially the brake system is perfect. If you apply 60 pounds in the brake pedal, you transmit 60. Because the system is closed, you don't have leaks, you don't have air entering, it's perfectly closed, and the fluid is uncompressible. That fluid is impossible to be compressed. Can I compress water a little? Yes. yes. Can I compress any hydraulic fluid? Yes. Yes, a little. You can, but a little. Can I compress brake fluid? No. No! It's magic. <laughs> brake fluid is magic. You apply 200 pounds and you transmit 200. Ah, what happened if in, in the brake system of my car, I replace the brake fluid for other fluid, uh, automatic transmission fluid, instead of brake fluid? What happened when you press the pedal? Smooth. You see that the pedal is? Loose. Yeah, a little elastic, no? Yeah. That's not good for brake. Yeah. In brake, you need Perfect. solid. That, this is the... This is a unique property of brake fluid. It's zero compressible. Zero. Why? Act to him. Good about the hydraulic circuit? The pressure is constant. Pressure is constant. You remember what is the formula for pressure, guys? Force 
force divided by area. area. No? Look, one PSI, one PSI is the pressure applied when you apply one pound of pressure in one square inch. This is one PSI. Uh, one pound applied in one square inch. This is one PSI. That's okay? That's the formula for pressure. Okay, if this is true, pay attention. If I move my solid, my 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 servo valves in this position, the actuator goes here. If I move this one in this position, the actuator goes that one. That one. Okay, perfect. I have a question. In this cylinder, the force number one in this direction is equal to the force number two in the opposite direction. No. No, or yes. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, the pressure is constant. Excuse me. Pressure one is equal to pressure two. Okay. I want to know if the force of the actuator is equal in this direction or in this direction. No, it's not. Let me demonstrate if yes or not. We are going to suppose that uh, the pressure in that system is 500 psi, for example. Look at this area. And look at the area in the other direction in contact with the fluid. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, pay attention. The pressure should be equal. Mm -hmm. The pressure is equal. Ah, uh, okay. How much is pressure number one? Is force one times area one. And how much is the pressure number two? Force two times area number two. Divided by, right? Okay, pay attention. Sorry. What is, suppose that the area here, the area here in the red area is five square inches. And the area in the blue area is four square inches. Pay attention. The area of the rod, the, the, the area of the rod is one square inch. How much is the area of the blue? Four. four. The area, the blue area is four square inches. Okay, pay attention. 500 equal to 500. Yes or not? Yeah. Okay, force number one 100. times area number one is equal to 500 PSI. Okay, the force number one is equal to 500 PSI divided by the area number one. How much is the area number one? Five. Five inches. Five square inches. How much is force number one? 100. 100? PSI. Pounds, 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 pounds. Okay, let me check force number two. Is equal to 500 PSI divided by the area number two. How much is the area number two? Four square inches, no? Mm -hmm. This is area number two. How much is 500 divided by four? 125. Okay, the force in one direction is bigger than the force in other direction. Ay, 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 ay. Suppose that I want to use one actuator like this. What is the name of this type of actuator? Look at this. This is single chaff. Single chaff. Single action. Double action. You see? Double action. Ah, what, a, what about one actuator like this? And uh, one input here and other here. Double what? shaft. Double this shaft is double shaft, double action. Ah, nice, no? Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question. For my boat. For my boat. This actuator is good for a, for a steering system? Yeah, yeah. Why not? Correct. In one direction is nice. Yeah. In the other direction is a little hard yeah. because it's less force in one direction than the other one. Which actuator will be nice for the steering system in my boat? Because in this one, the force is equal in both directions. Ah, this is why, guys, for power steering system, guys, look at this. Is double chaff double action. What about this cylinder? Is? Double, 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 action. Double, 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 action. double action. Oh, the force in both direction is? 
Equal. Ah, nice. Good, no? Ah, one, a, a, a cylinder with only one uh, yeah. uh, chop is not good. It's not good for power steering. In power steering, it should be like this. Cylinder with uh, only one output should be good for what? Look at this actuator. Look at this actuator. This actuator is? Single shaft. Single shaft. Okay. Okay, one input here and the other here. Yeah. Double? Large. Action. You can double it. Double action, single? Shaft. Shaft. Okay. Lift the, 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 the drive unit is heavy. But go down for gravity, no? I need less effort going down yeah. and more effort going oh, yeah, yeah. up. And you hear, additional. Ah, okay, okay. Give me other example where can I use this type of actuator, single chaff, double action. Correct, for example, the garage door in a, in a heavy boat. How way is the garage door in fiberglass? <laughs> you need a, an actuator, two actuator, single chaff, two, Leave the door and to go down for gravity, go down. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, this type of actuator, excellent for garage door. For example, the David, no? For the dinghy boat, mm -hmm. is this type of actuators. The passarella, this type of actuators. Yeah? yeah? Depend of the situation, you need, you need this type of actuators or double, double chop. This is the motor. In this particular case, you remember the explanation about the reversible motors DC? You remember? Yes. You Double remember? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the current for one direction, the current for the other direction, and the ground. You remember? Yeah. Tan, tan, and the solenoid control valves with two relays. You remember? Relay one, relay two, connected in tandem. You remember yes. that? Yes. Yes. Ah, perfect. Look at this. Two relays with one small signal, green and blue, coming from to, to, to rotate the motor in this direction or this direction. And what is this? The oh. outputs for What the is this? The port. Look, I have, I have the, the, the body of valves. Body Look. Of valves. Yeah. Ah, in this moment, it's in neutral. If I actuate this relay, I move it this one or and what about the fluid? Goes here or goes here? And this one will be the return. And this is the? Reservoir. The reservoir. Ah, look, this is the typical pump for a hydraulic system. Reservoir, body of valve, and motor. In this particular case, the motor is? DC. 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 Nice. Motor, body of valve, reservoir. and reservoir. Oh, can I replace the motor for my hand? Yes. Yes, yes. and you have this. In this particular situation, what about what about this? Body of valves. No, this is the pump, oh, but this pump. is this is manual manual pump with my hand. Okay. Ah, what happened if the wheel is a little bigger? Yes, it's, ah, it's better for me. What happened if the wheel is a small? Harder. Uh, harder. You need a ah, manual. look at this. I have the reservoir here on top. I added fluid here. The gears in the bottom. And here, here, guys, with camera, come on, come on. <laughs> Look at this, papas and mummies. Look. Middle. Body of valves. Man, this is the body of valves. Okay. The body of valves. The gears are here and the reservoir on top. Ah, this is a mechanic hydraulic system. Guys, look at this. Look at this actuator. Look at the actuator. The actuator is this, you see? What type of cylinder is this? Single action. Single shaft? Single shaft. Double action. Double action. Ah, look at the look at the the servo valve. The servo valve. The servo valve can be activated neutral, forward, or reverse. You see? It's manual. It's manual, it's manual. Everybody follow me? Manual activation for, for this, look. What is this? Body of valve. Body of valve, what is this? Actuator. The cylinder, what is this? Manual. The handle, 
to move the ball in this position, neutral or other position. You understand? Mr. Lopez, I don't want this handle because I need call to, to my assistant. Hey, papi, move forward. I need the windlass up. I need the windlass down. I prefer move it, those elements with a couple of Solenoid. solenoids. The body of balls, move it here or here with one solenoid here or other solenoid here. Okay, you remember the control, neutral, forward, and reverse, no? Right. Not that one. Okay. All right, look at this. This is a hydraulic transmission, diesel transmission. This is the pump, the fluid enter here, and the fluid return here. Okay, and what is this? The server, the valves. Valve. Oh, the yeah. body of valves. Oh, yeah. And those, those valves move it with two solenoids. One solenoid for? Yes. And other solenoid for? Oh. Ah, how I activate that, that solenoid? So when I move the handle reverse, I send a signal. Look at this, 85 and 86. You remember? Yes, yes. Reverse. Or I send a signal for? Forward. Oh, yes. oh nice, nice. I love it, this system. Pay attention, my friend. The customers, the captain said, I don't, I have forward but in reverse nothing. My boat not respond in reverse, only in forward. Okay, like you came here and you say, okay, the engine is running. I have communication here with the captain. The engine is running. I disconnect but but solenoid, but solenoid. I disconnect but solenoid. And I connect two alligator cable from the battery, positive and negative. The engine is running in neutral. And I bring here power positive and negative and engage forward. Oh, wow. And I disconnect. Okay, my transmission is working in forward. And now I, I bring the alligator cable positive negative here and engage reverse. What happened? My transmission is damaged? No, no my transmission is perfect. Ah, probably one of the solenoids is damaged. Oh, let me check the solenoid. The solenoids are good. What is the problem? Probably the harness, the sender, or probably the joystick. You understand? Ah, uh, you enjoyed the explanation, guys? Yeah.